These are obviously very healthy looking squash leaves. These are definitely not healthy looking squash leaves. They're incredibly brown, yellow looking. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today because this can be caused by many different things, but I'm gonna help you narrow it down looking at the plant's morphology and what it's doing specifically to help you determine what exactly is going on with your squash. Okay, so the best way we can actually look at this is by looking at my plant first, and then you guys taking the time to look at your plant to determine what characteristics your squash is mimicking compared to mine. So when we discuss the causes and obviously the remedies for it, you can put two and two together. So my plant's actually doing a few things. <laughs> Number one is that it obviously has that yellowing or the browning of the edges. Now the edges are discolored, but in some leaves, even the center of the leaf or the leaf margins themselves is also discolored. The other thing to note is that the yellowing seems to be more intense and there is actual leaf leaf loss towards the base of the plant, aka the older portions of the plant. Now, this may or may not be normal. We'll discuss how to determine if it's normal here in a little bit. The other thing is where my plant has chosen to grow. So this squash is on a lawn. It's allowed to go wherever it wants. It has free reign. In theory, if we know anything about phototropism, we know that plants lean towards the light. And so the fact that my pumpkin literally very naturally without any assistance from me decided to dive headfirst into my potato patch, it's trying to switch identities. The fact that it's headed that direction is actually a pretty big sign as to why my leaves are yellow. When it comes to yellowing, we have yellowing on the plant, literally all over the plant. Let's look at the newer yellowing. So any yellowing on new growth, and you can tell what new growth is, it's quite obvious. It hasn't been manipulated mechanically by wind or water, so it doesn't have bruising and scratching and oddities to it. It obviously hasn't been exposed to many pests, so there shouldn't be, you know, healed cut marks or anything like that. Anything that doesn't show signs of age is considered a new leaf. Now, any signs of yellowing on the outsides and or the insides is obviously a sign of nutrient deficiency. So when it comes to pumpkins, this is a squash in particular in my case, it's very likely nitrogen or potassium. Now, it's very difficult to tell without doing a tissue sample. Anyone who can tell you by looking at a plant what nutrient is lacking, unless it's very serious signs, it's impossible for anyone to tell. I've never met anyone, not even a professor, that's been able to be like, yeah, that's got nitrogen issues. They can say, hypothetically, it should have nitrogen issues. We don't know unless there's a tissue test done. So what can we do to help remove those yellowing leaves without over fertilizing, particularly if the yellowing of leaves is not a fertilizer issue? Well, if you've been on this channel long enough, you know that there's a number of different things that can actually impede the uptake of nutrients that has nothing to do with how much fertilizer is in your garden. And if you're just a regular gardener that doesn't go too hardcore and isn't, you know, market gardening, it's pretty darn likely that you have enough nutrients in there and that is not the issue. So the second thing to look at is actually the watering patterns. Is it drying out? Or is it soaking wet nonstop? These two things affect the uptake of the nutrients. So if we have waterlogged roots, it can obviously cause issues with bacterial root rot, which will impede the uptake of nutrients because it singes off the root hairs, which is the single most important part of your root for nutrient uptake. And if it's too dry, we are missing something called the soil solution. So soil solution is simply referring to the soil, the nutrients, and the water all in harmony together, kind of in a slurry that doesn't look like a slurry to us, but to plant roots actually is. It's their version of a milkshake. And what they have when it's dried out is a milkshake with the blueberries and the strawberries completely separated and not blended together yet. So it's very difficult for them to take a drink and uptake it, which ultimately with a fast growing plant like a squash can definitely show up as a nutrient issue. Okay, so the other 
way to have an nutrient issue is actually with pH. So if you have a pH problem, um, either too high or too low, outside of the Goldilocks zone, if you will, that is going to impede nutrient uptake. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. I would actually lean towards looking at the watering scenario first and foremost. Now, if you're confident that the watering is fine and it's not drying out on a regular basis and it's not sitting in water for more than 48 hours-ish, then it's probably an actual fertilizer issue. And what you wanna add is just a bloom formula. Something that's made for tomatoes would work. Uh, I would not go for something with more nitrogen because then you're gonna have the opposite issue where you get less flowers or no flower. We'll have less than, less than lackluster results of pollinating. Unless you watch this video here and you know all about hand pollinating and how to exactly do it and why it matters. It increases your rates by 200% if you do it correctly. I personally, with something of this size, will only use a liquid fertilizer, a granular or a powder, or anything that sits on the soil surface. It's gonna take too long for that to get pushed into that soil profile to make much of a difference. Whereas a liquid fertilizer is going to act much, much quicker because it's obviously going to get pushed via the soil solution towards the roots, which will allow the plant to uptake it. So ideally liquid, if you're on a budget or you just wanna use up what you have, sprinkle it on top, don't overdo it, follow the instructions. Just because it's a big plant and a heavy feeder does not mean more the merrier, particularly all at once. If you choose to do this, you can fertilize with a liquid fertilizer every single watering. If you so choose, it will be completely fine. If it is bone dry before you fertilize, you need to wet the soil first. So you need to thoroughly water the pot and then go in with the fertilizer. You never want to apply fertilizer to dry roots. And this goes for any fertilizer. And this goes for any plant out there, regardless. It, uptake is diminished and then it also can harm your plant. So something to stay away from. The other way that you can help your plant if you've identified that it's a watering issue is actually via mulch. But you can use anything. You can use this terra fiber, you can use peat, you can use leaves, you can use plastic. It doesn't matter. Anything that helps retain moisture. It's not so much about retaining moisture as it is about moderating the speed in which you're losing or gaining water. Nice thick layer, inch, two inches, ideally. Okay, so with this next one, I am gonna throw it in there because some of you may be suffering from this and you need to look for vine borers. They look like this, their damage looks like this. Any wilting, yellowing of leaves could be caused by that. So obviously look for that first and foremost before making the conclusion that it's any of the other ones I'm mentioning here today. Now there are bacteria that can cause wilt. There's Fusarium wilt, which is common across several different plants out there. There's powdery mildew, again, common across several different plants out there. So obviously anything that's bacterial or fungal infection is going to cause issues. Now this kind of whitening of the leaves is just sun blustering. It's completely harmless. What we're looking for is something more along the lines of this, but this is mechanical damage, but we're looking for signs of bacterial or fungal issues. Now, if you're suffering from powdery mildew, this video here actually goes over what you may choose to use. Um, if you have any other fungal issue, you may choose to use sulfur or copper. I'll put some links down below for that. If I forgot, let me know and I will put some links down below for that. And if it is disease and it's not nutrient driven, it's going to be the entire plant itself. New leaves to old leaves. You may find it on old leaves, you may find it on new leaves, but it's unbiased in who it attacked. Now, another key in particular with the NPK is that if you're suffering from these, they will not show up in, if you're suffering with these, they're gonna show up in the new leaves. So if your new leaves, such as in my case, are showing zero signs of nutrient issue, it's very unlikely to be a watering issue. It's very unlikely to be a nutrient issue. The old leaves that are beginning to fall off, yellow, brown, whatever the case is, and honest to goodness, you can tell when a leaf is older and you can tell what a fresh leaf looks like. If anything that's not fresh looking is dying off, it's probably just time. It's done its duty of photosynthesis. It's retiring and going back into compost. And that's totally acceptable, particularly with large fast growers, such as a pumpkin. So that case, I actually won't worry. So these 
older ones you see at the top of the plant, I'm not that concerned about what comes of them because their die off is very normal. This one. And this is ultimately what I think is happening with mine. Sun. So sun is incredibly stressful for plants. In this space, there is plants that do not do well. And there are plants that normally love full sun, such as tomatoes, and they're struggling. And it's because of the intensity of sun in this space. Now, the reason why I can say it's sun with so much confidence is the fact that my plant is literally running away from it. It is going to physical shade and it's just shooting its flowers up for pollinators to get to it. But the bulk of the plant is underneath my potatoes, meaning it's trying to get away from the sun. Now, it can show up in the sign of blistering or actual sun damage, yes. In some cases, it can just show up in crispy edges because the plant isn't able to uptake nutrients properly because it is so freaking stressed out. So if your plant is crawling away from the light and doing the opposite of whatever all the other plants in your life are doing, it's probably a sign that it's sun stress. I can put up a shade cloth to protect it. I can put up a physical barrier to protect it. You can also leave it and let the plant figure out its own things. If you want to guarantee harvest, I heavily encourage you to cover your plants. Squash, despite popular belief, tend to be slightly more sensitive to sun compared to something like a pepper, which is also a full sun plant. It tends to do very well in full sun compared to a squash. The last one that a lot of people think is the possibility or the reason for browning of leaf tips is actually chlorine or chloramine, which is what we find in tap water. So if you want to learn more as to whether or not that is the case or the problem, you're going to want to check out this video right here. And that video, Google says you should watch because they're watching you. So I'll talk to you guys next time.